engineer your space. Today's episode is dedicated to the balcony. Now, whether you own or rent your apartment, a balcony is an amazing thing to have. Unfortunately, more often than not, I see them completely bare, unused, or with just a chair or a couple of plants. I have much bigger plans for my balcony. I'm going to transform it into an outdoor oasis complete with a lounge area and garden. It will be a wonderful place to relax at the end of the day. And I'm going to do it all with minimum construction, using really simple things like storage bins, plywood, and basic tools. You'll see how easy it is. Can't wait to show you. So let's get started. With most balconies, including mine, you're a little bit exposed to your neighbors. So to deal with that, I'm going to put this reed fencing here on either side for privacy. This is a really great product. It's light, it's easy to work with, and it's really affordable. This was only about $24 from Home Depot, and you get 15 feet in length, so you get a lot to work with. Now it is six feet tall, which is higher than what I want my walls to be. So I've gone ahead and cut off about a foot and a half from the top here. And I've kept that section because we're going to use it a little bit later on. Now to secure this to the metal railing here, that you just use some gardening wire. You cut lengths of about seven to eight inches long. And I'm doing that with some snips. These are a really great tool to have in your arsenal. Um, it cuts metal, wood, I've even trained my plants with it. A really good thing to have in your toolbox. Now what you do is you shape it like a U, like this. And wherever you have a metal railing, you just take your wire and you fish it through like that. And then you just twist. Now you do that at the top, at the bottom, every foot or so, just to make sure it's nice and secure. ending right where I want it. But there's one last thing I want to do. I want to soften this edge here a little bit. To prevent the pieces from falling off when I'm cutting here, I'm going to put some masking tape right up along the edge. Your downstairs neighbors will thank you for doing this. I'm going to cut my pattern freehand, but if you want to be a little bit more precise, you can always draw it out before. Now this side's done, time for me to go do the other side and when I come back, we're gonna take a look at the floor. So we have our walls taken care of. Now it's time to deal with the floor. It's not the most attractive. And there's many ways that you can deal with that. You could put wooden tile that you can just click together on the surface. You could paint it. There's even products that mimic stone. But I'm a renter, so I wanted a solution that was non-permanent, quick, easy, and cheap. So I decided to go with outdoor carpet. I got this great remnant, eight feet by six feet. It was only about $17, so really affordable. And you can cut it with scissors, so really easy. So let's put it on. You just smooth it out as you unroll it, making sure it's straight. Because I'm gonna have so many things on the balcony, I don't have to worry about gluing it down. Plus, you don't really wanna do that if you're renting. So now we have our walls and our floor taken care of. Next comes seating. And I wanted a place that I could lounge and maybe take a nap in the afternoon. So I decided to make this low-lying bench here in the corner. It's gonna be made up of two sections, each one 32 inches by 24 inches. And I wanted to make my bench using the least amount of construction possible. So I decided to use these plastic containers as my base. I'm gonna be using four of them, arranging them in an L-shaped pattern like this. So here you have a nice solid base for your bench and it could also double as long-term storage if you want. Just make sure that you pick containers that have solid tops so that the rain doesn't get in. So for the top, I'm gonna to use half inch plywood. And I'm putting my gloves on here so I don't get any splinters in my hands. Plywood comes in two by four sheets at the hardware store and you can get them to cut it at the store to the size that you need. So you don't have to worry about doing that at home. Now before you install the plywood, you need to seal it to prevent water damage. I did this earlier using Thompson's water seal. I just sprayed it on and then let it dry for 24 hours and then it's ready to go. Perfect. Now the only thing that we need to take care of is the side view. It's really not pretty. 
So to hide it, I'm gonna use the leftover fence that I had from earlier. It's perfect because it's just high enough to cover the side. The only thing is, it's not very sturdy. It needs something to hold it together. And to do that, I built this frame out of corner molding. And when you put the two of them together, you get a nice solid piece like this. Building this frame is actually really easy. All you need is a little bit of patience. The side panel is built in two sections, with the fence component being about an inch to two inches taller than the height of the bench. That's just gonna make it easier to adjust when you're installing it. Now the frame holding the fence is made out of corner molding, 11 16 molding. I'm gonna walk you through how to make the corner panel because once you know how to make that, making the straight panel will be really straightforward. The first step to make the frame is to cut the ends at a 45 degree angle for the corner. To figure out what your outside measurement needs to be to make the cut, you take the length of your panel, which in my case is 24 inches, and you add a quarter of an inch. Cutting the 45 degree angle is really simple with a miter box. It already has the grooves in place at the 45 degree angles that we need. So just put your saw in the right groove for the front piece cut and then for the side piece cut. To put the frame together, use a corner clamp to join the two pieces. Just add some wood glue before you tighten everything. Put in a couple of staples at the bottom for extra hold. And to make it even stronger, you can add a small nail here like this. The easiest way I found to secure the fence to the molding is to first staple it on with quarter inch staples and then pour lots of wood glue over the ends, covering them completely. The glue will bond everything really well together, but you need to let that dry for about two to three hours. When your panel is ready, you just staple it on. If your staples aren't going in all the way, you can just use a hammer to push them in. Then you trim off the excess. Before I start trimming, I'm gonna add some masking tape so that I don't have to pick up these little pieces everywhere. And the last step is to add some quarter molding to the top. I'm just using some finishing nails here to put the molding on. I really love the way the side panels turned out. Now another option for the side is to use lattice, but I think using the leftover fence like this makes the bench look like a built-in, and I like that look. Now the finishing touch for the bench are the cushions. And I couldn't find cushions that fit exactly the dimensions of my bench. So I decided to make my own using outdoor foam and some remnants of outdoor fabric. Since I'm not a sewer and I don't have a sewing machine, I had to get creative to make my cushion covers. I cut the bottom fabric about an inch wider than the foam and the top fabric about an inch and a half wider. Then I pinned the top fabric to the bottom one with the foam in between but making sure to leave one side unpinned. For this seam, I use fusible tape. Now that's a great alternative if you don't have a sewing machine. It bonds fabric together when you apply a hot iron. I did that for the three sides that are pinned. Then I turned the cover inside out, put the foam inside, and closed off the remaining side using iron-on Velcro. I really love the way they turned out. Now just add some throw cushions to make the lounging area complete. And now I have a great place to take my naps in the afternoon. But we're not ready to relax just yet. There's the garden area that we haven't done, so let's go on the other side and get started on that. So here I am on the garden side of my balcony. Now the first thing I wanted to do was add a really large planter here for my plants. The thing is, it was hard to find one that was exactly the right size. So I decided to make one out of the plastic containers that I use for the bench. It's actually exactly the right size that I wanted. Now, of course, we have to make a few modifications for this to work. The first one is to drill some holes on the bottom here for drainage. Just use a really large drill bit for that. So that's all you really need to do to the plastic container to make it work as a planter. The rest is really just about making it pretty and also elevating it so that the water drains easier. First, you make a frame to support the planter. I use furring strips for this. They're really inexpensive at about a dollar for eight feet and great for rough framing like this. You cut four pieces and join them together with a corner clamp. You drill a couple of pilot holes and then screw the pieces together using thin wood screws to prevent splitting. Draw on the casters and now your planter is really easy to move and the water is going to drain easily. An alternative to building a frame and putting casters on like this is to use these Vesla storage bins from IKEA. They come ready-made with casters, so that's also a good option. 
Now one last thing to help with drainage is to put some rocks at the bottom. Now the sides will be hidden with fence panels just like the ones we built for the bench. So you need to build a frame that's going to sit on top of the bin so that we can staple the panels to it. And the last step is to finish off with corner molding. And once you've done all that, you have a really beautiful planter. Now I've put flowers and vines in mine, but you could plant vegetables or an herb garden, whatever you want. Now I just need to put a few more accessories and plants and my little garden area will be complete. Well, I find that adding all these extra accessories and other plants just really gives a nice, complete, finished look to my little garden. I did have to get creative with accessories. For instance, this table here I made from an old basket that I had and a round marble top that I didn't know what to do with. And it really dresses up this corner nicely. And this votive candle holder is actually something that I made out of an old luggage rack that I had. I just took the legs off, then drilled a couple of holes to put the candle holders in, and now it becomes a beautiful addition to my wall and gives a great place for my vines to grow. This bench that I'm sitting on is actually something that I made from an old wooden crate. And then I used leftover plywood, foam, and fabric that I had for my bench and made the top. Then I attached it to the crate with some screws and now I have extra seating. I really encourage you to look around your house, go to flea markets, garage sales, and you're bound to find really inexpensive things that will really dress up your balcony and make it feel like an outdoor room. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and that you're going to take a whole different look at your balcony and now see it as usable square footage. Just a few changes can really transform it into a wonderful place to just relax, read a book, and enjoy. See you next time.